These days we hear about fewer and fewer people going to church and that religions are losing members. But there's one religion that's been going big guns. It's an ancient religion. It goes back even to the time of Jeremiah. I call it the Church of Dr. Feelgood and the religion of me, myself, and I. It's being proclaimed throughout our country and throughout the world. Me, myself, and I. You owe me a living. You need to look after my feelings. You need to do what I want done. There's a great word that we don't hear anymore, but it describes it perfectly. Selfish. It's the church, the religion of being selfish, even though that's not what it's called. Well, selfishness is a natural trait. We're born with it. You know, I, I many times see the little infant being very selfish. Feed me. Change my diaper. Get me where I want to go. They kind of need to do that because they're helpless. They're totally dependent, and so they need to say, take care of me. But as Jesus and St. Paul tell us, we've got to grow out of that. We've got to transform ourselves from that worldly way of doing things into the spiritual way. Selfishness, selfishness needs to turn into self-sacrifice, self-denial, and self-discipline. With self-discipline, I find that I appreciate most what I have earned, that by working for it, I really understood uh, did I need it or not, and I was able to push aside things I didn't need. And when I did earn it, I could take pride in it. I remember one time the sister was handing out awards, and she mistakenly gave me one, and I said, oh, sister, I didn't get a good enough grade. And she goes, oh, that's right, took it away. But I, it wouldn't have felt good getting that because I hadn't earned it. Self-denial. Self-denial is learning not to weigh ourselves down with the cares and the materials of the world. They end up as burdens that drag us down when we're trying to do things. Self-denial helps me to learn to get away from the unimportant things to get what's truly important. When I was in grade school, I wanted to play outside and I wanted to watch TV and there's mom and dad saying, no, you're going to deny yourself and study. The sisters said, no, Stang, you're going to sit here and do the reading. You're not going to look out the window or keep going to the bathroom. But I found over time that as I did that, I started to know things and understand things. And I really found that marvelous, that I had found something important by doing less of something that truly was not important. Self-sacrifice. Self-sacrifice, this is today we heard the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew is rich in guiding us in that. Matthew 5, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice. Matthew 6, with the Our Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And Matthew 25, for when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was naked, you gave me clothing. Those are self-sacrifices. When I am asked to forgive others, sometimes I don't want to forgive. They hurt me. When I try to feed the hungry and clothe the naked, I find myself thinking, so you want some of my stuff? Why don't you get it yourself? What do you mean I should sacrifice some of what I have? But I found that by doing that, I come to a greater appreciation of what I have. And I come to find other people doing it who make great friends and comrades on this path. Self-sacrifice is how parents raise their children. 
to have successful futures. Self-sacrifice is how children pay back those who are helping them. And so we are asked by St. Paul to transform ourselves from selfishness to self-denial, self-sacrifice. How do I do it? Uh, Jesus gave us great guidance, the, the two great commandments. The second one, love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, if I would want that, I should give it to someone else. If I want to be forgiven, I need to forgive. If I want someone to help me when I'm down, I need to help others when they are down. We need to do that. St. Peter, who became a great apostle, became the rock of the church. And last Sunday, you heard Jesus proclaim him the rock of the church. But he still had a little bit of holding on to the religion of Dr. Feelgood. And that's why when Jesus today said, the Messiah, you proclaim me the Messiah, but the Messiah needs to suffer and die. And Peter, that doesn't fit the idea of the church of feel good. You should be happy. You should be successful. We're hoping that you're going to become the ruler and we get to, to be there with you and, and get some of that uh, uh, good stuff that comes with being in charge of things. So what does Jesus say? Jesus has got the temptation. He doesn't want to suffer and die, and he doesn't need Peter telling him, don't do it. So he says, get behind me, Satan. You need to transform yourself from worldly thinking to the way God thinks, for it is by the cross that we find salvation. We need to be open to self-sacrifice, self-denial, and self-discipline. Now, don't get me wrong, Jesus wants us to be happy. We think of carrying a cross over, supposed to all be glum and gloomy. No, he wants us to be happy. He's just teaching us that the way to happiness is to look out for others. Uh, to paraphrase a president, ask not what others can do for me, but what I can do for others. That's the way to true happiness. But I think it's better said with the prayer, it's often called the prayer of St. Francis, and I'd like to end with that. This is how we transform ourselves. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, let me offer pardon. Where there's doubt, let me show faith. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me show the light, and where there is sadness, let me find joy. O Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to, be, as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, in pardoning that we are pardoned, and in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen.